This is Twit. A federal appeals court today ruled against the FCC and also its rules for net neutrality. The United States Court of Appeals in D.C. said that the FCC doesn't have the authority to impose its open Internet rules on Internet providers like Verizon because of how the FCC itself classifies such companies. The FCC does not classify Internet providers as common carrier service like the telephone companies are. If the ruling were to stand, it would mean Internet providers could charge rich websites more to provide faster service while throttling the little guys. The FCC may appeal. Motorola might start letting you build your own tablets, at least the way you can with a Moto X. Motorola CEO Dennis Woodside tells the blog Pocket Lint that the company is considering offering tablets that can be customized on the Moto Maker website. Buyers could choose colors, materials, and specs, such as the amount of storage and accessories. Evleaks, who often gets his hands on leaked photos of prototype smartphones, posted a picture today that's supposed to be Nokia's secret Android phone, codenamed Normandy. The picture appears to show a home screen with Microsoft's Metro UI on top of Android. Wow, Android with a Windows Phone interface. Microsoft is currently in the process of buying Nokia's devices and services business. And Nokia owns 92% of the global Windows Phone market. Oh, good. We've got a New Jersey story that doesn't involve a bridge. This one's about the New Jersey state government shutting down something else drone abuse. The state Senate approved a bill that restricts how police and firefighters and other first responders are allowed to use drones. For starters, no weapons on drones. Also, police have to get a warrant before using a drone for surveillance, and they have to delete any information gathered after two weeks unless it's part of an official criminal investigation. The bill now goes to Governor Chris Christie for signature. Don't tell Leo, but now employers can pay employee salaries using Bitcoin. A company called BitPay, which claims to be the world's largest payment processor for virtual currencies, released a beta payroll API. It enables employers to offer a net payroll deduction paid in Bitcoin to accompany each paycheck, which is in dollars. The service is currently available only in the United States. Back to some Motorola news. The company launched its Moto X phone in Europe today. It comes in a wide range of colors like black or white. Interestingly, the European model actually doesn't offer those Moto Maker customization options like the U.S. version, and it's more expensive. An unlocked Moto X in Europe costs uh, up to $624 unlocked. It launched in the U.S. at $599 and then eventually dropped to $399. Phones will ship to France, Britain, and Germany in February. Apple doesn't use its iBeacon indoor positioning system for transactions yet, but most Apple watchers expect them to. Yesterday, a company called iMobile 3 beat Apple to it. The company announced iBeacon support for its PassMarket product. PassMarket is a search engine for collecting mobile wallet passes from merchants. PassMarket system makes brick-and-mortar shopping like online shopping. You just walk up to the cash register and kind of check out. The cash register knows you're there because iBeacon uh, is, um, is deployed in a partnership with a company called Two Canoes. Customers can pay with their PassMarket wallet app on iPhone without using a credit card. PassMarket also says their system is more secure than, say, Target's because credit card data is stored in a single secure vault at the payment processor and not at the store. Google now makes it a little easier for you to find images that you have the right to use on your own site, like your blog. A new menu item under search tools lets you sort images that you've pulled up in a search by usage rights, such as labeled for reuse or labeled for commercial reuse. Microsoft added a similar feature to Bing last July. It just got a little easier for people to make augmented reality content. The Spanish augmented reality company Catchum today launched a new platform called Craft AR. It lets you link digital assets to real world objects, for example, additional information about an object that's displayed when a user is looking at that object in real life. It also enables the creation of 3D models through scanning real objects and tools for embedding augmented reality experiences into mobile apps. Today, YouTube brought back the central inbox for video comments. Users had complained loudly when Google switched to switch YouTube to a Google Plus-centric comment system and then removed that central inbox altogether. So Google fast-tracked the development of a new content management page that lets you see, respond to, and moderate your comments all in one place. That's Google's words. 